we now find ourselves in the room that was the original servants' quarters. The Kelton family always had several live-in servants, in addition to several that would have come just for the day and then gone home in the evening. They likely were Irish, and they were paid a modest amount, unlike slaves. They would have worked in the kitchen, they would have cleaned, worked in the garden, and taken care of the family clothing. They would have slept in this room, which was like a dormitory, and would have been warmed by a fireplace, just like the rest of the family. They would call their servants in the dining room by ringing a bell to have them come in from the kitchen and bring in food. The Keltons did not have buffet-style serving. They had servants who brought in food and took it back to the kitchens. Life was very hard if you were a servant. You didn't earn that much money to begin with, and you worked six days a week. You had one day off, usually Sunday afternoons off, and that was about it. And work began very early, sometimes for the scullery maids who had to scour out the fireplaces. It could be as early as 4.35 in the morning. Uh, for the cook who had to have breakfast ready, that meant firing up that wood stove and getting it ready. So she had to be up early. They baked, so that meant getting all of the bread and uh, baked goods ready to go before the family got up. So there was a great deal of work to be done from sunup to sundown, and servants did that work without much of a break. A number of images from renowned artist Edward Penfield are featured here. He was an illustrator born in 1866 in Brooklyn, New York, and was one of the leaders in the American Art Nouveau movement. Edward Penfield is best known for his illustrations in Harper's Monthly magazine. Edward Penfield. You've heard that name before, a Kelton family relative. Edward was the art director of Harper's Magazine in New York City for about 10 or 15 years. He was also an artist who traveled and created books of sketches of his travels in Europe. These particular pieces of work are advertising art that were meant to be put in windows of shops. Harper's Magazine would have covers exactly like these, but much smaller, and these larger reproductions would be used to advertise the Harper's issue of that month that you could purchase inside. If you look at each one, you'll notice that they're folded, and that's because they would have arrived at the shopkeeper's place of business in a folded manner. That doesn't mean that they were treated improperly in later days. Grace Kelton, when she was studying art in New York, was there at the same time that Edward Penfield was the Harper's art director, and I think we can presume that they spent some time together. He was not her teacher, but I wouldn't be surprised if he mentored her in her art career. And if you look at the, her artwork that you passed as you came up from the Underground Railroad Learning Station, you'll notice that it bears some resemblance in terms of the flat colors, uh, the black outlines to the figures. My favorites include one cover that shows the President of the United States. Do you see the picture of George Washington? Another that I particularly like shows a man and a woman on lounge chairs. They are on a trip to Europe, and the story is that that is Edward Penfield and his wife on their wedding trip. They actually went on their wedding trip with her father, who apparently paid for the honeymoon. Mm -hmm. 